.NET for Devices presents Even Tiles Part 2 Application Bar and Page Navigation Welcome to the second part of Even Tiles. I'm starting Visual Studio again and we're just continuing where we left in the first part where we were writing on the backside of the application tile. So here's the application again inside Visual Studio and what I want to do is add an application bar to it and we're going to do that with another tool being Expression Blend and I'm just opening that from the project menu inside Visual Studio and what you can see is a completely different look and feel so this is a designer's view of our main form and I just resized it it's exactly the same form but now being displayed in Expression Blend and what we're gonna do is take a look at the properties here and I'm gonna add an application bar so I'm gonna create a new application bar or actually let Expression Blend create a new application bar for me and what we're gonna do is add a new item inside a collection of buttons and that button collection is still empty so I'm gonna add another item here and that other item will appear as a button inside my application bar later on. Now, an application bar button needs an icon, and you can already see a nicely pre-populated list of application bar icons. And I'm just going to select one of those. It's going to be a settings icon. And I'm also going to add a little text there, being settings that will be displayed under that particular icon. I'm going to add another one. The other one, for the other one, I'm again going to select an icon. And this time we're going to select a question mark and we're going to use that to navigate to an about page. So I'm also going to add the text about in here. From inside this collection editor, I can change the order of application bar icons that I just have added. I'm not going to do that, but what you can see immediately is that we now have an application bar on the main page of our application. And it contains two application bar icons. What I also like to do is set the opacity of the application bar to zero. It's a matter of taste, but the default background color does not look that good in my opinion. What you can see in the project window here is that we have a folder now with icons stored in it. I'm going to make sure to select the Eventiles project again and the next thing we're going to do is add a couple of pages. In order to store them in the right folder I just selected the project Eventiles. I'm going to add a new item. And that item is going to be a Windows Phone page. I'm just going to rename that page so instead of phone page 1, what we're going to call it is our settings page.xaml. I'm going to click OK. And here you see a new page appearing. That new page is also added to our project automatically. I'm going to fit it to make it entirely visible. I'm going to change the name of the application in the properties window here. I'm going to set a text property to even tiles and immediately we get visible feedback of that inside our phone page. I'm going to do the same thing for the page name. I'm just going to change that into settings. And the next thing we are going to do is add another page. So we're basically going to repeat those actions and this time we're going to add an about page. Now we leave those pages empty and the only reason why we are adding them right now is in order to get some functionality behind our application bar later on so we can navigate from page to page. So the about page is here. Also make sure to have it entirely visible. I'm going to set some text properties again, change the application name again into even tiles and change the page name this time into, for instance, about. And that's all the functionality we are adding to our user interface using Expression Blend. So what I can do right now is save my entire project. In other words, all files belonging to my project that I newly created or modified are saved right now. And from inside Expression Blend, I can also execute our application. So I can run our project inside Expression Blend. And what's going to happen, what you can see right now already, is that our emulator is starting again. So I'm going to make sure that it's entirely visible on the screen. And this time the application is deployed from 
expression blend. Now there's the application bar with its buttons, but if I click on them, nothing is happening. If I click on those dots, what you can see is that we see the text underneath our application bars as well. So I'm going to terminate the application using the back key, and what we're going to do now is close expression blend, and we're going to go back to Visual Studio to add some functionality, and immediately you can see that Visual Studio knows that our project has changed by expression blend. It asked us to reload the project, which we did, and you can see that a new folder icons has been added, as well as those two pages being the setting page and the about page. So they're all part of my project right now inside Visual Studio as well. So I'm going to open the main page again, it's XAML, and what you can see there is that Expression Blend added some XAML code for us, being the definition of our application bar, and we are going to add a click event handler for both application bar buttons. Now what you can do is let Visual Studio generate names for your event handlers, but I like to create those you know, like meaningful names like settings underscore click for instance. I'm going to do something similar for my menu entry for the about page, so I can navigate to my about page later on. I'm going to call that about click, and now I'm going to use a context menu to navigate to an event handler, which is automatically generated by Visual Studio in my code behind file. I'm repeating that same action for the about click event handler, just navigate to it, and you can see two empty event handlers here, and what we are going to do is navigate to another page. And in this situation, in the settings click event handler, we are going to navigate to our settings page, and we are using the navigation service for that. This static class has a method called navigate, and we're going to pass it a new URI being the address of our settings page, and that's just simply the file name of our settings page. Now since this URI is not an absolute URI like a website address, but it, we specify also that it is a relative URI, and I'm going to repeat that functionality also for my about page. So this time I'm going to specify a new URI that contains the name of my about page.xaml file. It's again a relative URI, and with that we have all our functionality in place, so we can now run this project from inside Visual Studio. Now the emulator is simply reused, so the one that was started in Expression Blend now runs the application that was deployed to it from inside Visual Studio. I can click on my application bar menu entries and you can see that my page is changing from the main page to the settings page. And I can navigate back to that main page by just using the back key. I can do the same thing for the about key as well, and navigate back again to so with that we have functionality in place inside our application. Of course the rest of the functionality of our application is still there. I can start it from the start menu. And the other thing I can do now is take another look at our settings page and then maybe start another application. And I'm doing that by using the start button on the emulator. And for instance I'm just starting Internet Explorer and let's see what's going to happen. So Internet Explorer is starting, our application Even Tiles is now in the background, so it's not executing at this moment, and now if I'm using the back key here, let's see what's going to happen. So I'm holding the back key, and what you can see is all applications that are currently on our Windows Phone in memory. If I select one, it immediately becomes the active application. If I'm using the back key by just clicking it instead of holding it, I'm returning to the previous page. If I'm doing that again, I'm again returning to the previous page, which, as a matter of fact, is the settings page inside our application. However, our application is behaving a little bit different from other applications on the device. And in order to see that, we're going to navigate to a couple of pages. And navigating, for instance, back to the main page and then to the about page, it's like immediately the next page is appearing. But if we terminate our application, it's like a page of a book is turned, so there's a little animation. Let me start my application again, you see that little animation, but if we go to a page inside our own application, we immediately see that page. 
how to add those animations will be topic of the next episode of developing event tiles. For now we are at the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it.